the state capital out in Lansing, Michigan, as we get you set for Minnesota and Michigan State here on a college football Saturday. Welcome everybody into the Gopher pregame show. I am Pierre Newsham alongside Ron Johnson and Justin Gard is in East Lansing getting us ready for this game. Look at him smiling. He's up early. He's happy. He's, <laughs> he's, he's smiling a lot more than I am this morning. So still a little too early for me guys. But here we are as we get ready for the Spartans and the Gophers. The non-conference portion of the schedule is now a thing of the past. And now it's time to get down to the nitty gritty as Minnesota kicks off conference play later this morning against Michigan State. Ron, I'm going to start with you. What needs to change for Minnesota, if anything, as we transition into conference play? Uh, I, I don't think anything needs to change, but they do need to find a receiver. Like, they have to find somebody to fill in where Crab, uh, Chris Altman-Bell would take over. I mean, it would be whether it's a jump ball, whether it's a third down big play. He always was Johnny on the spot, and now they have to find – not one, but two guys. I don't think you can fill the shoes with one guy. So you've got to find two receivers, whether it's Daniel Jackson, uh, Dalen Wright, or uh, Michael Brown Stevens. Somebody has to step up and become that guy for Tanner Morgan because on third down, second down, when he's, you know, when everything, when, when the bullets are flying, he's looking for a guy. Justin, we uh, made it through conference play, passing with flying colors. I mean, but at this point now, does it feel like the season can maybe officially start at this point this weekend? It does. I think this actually does start the season. And you ask what needs to change for the Gophers now. I don't think we even know because they haven't really been tested. They've done exactly what they were supposed to do against three bad teams. Their non-conference opponents have yet to win a game this season. I was watching TV this morning. New Mexico State has a good chance against Hawaii today to get the first win uh, for a Gophers opponent. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this team is, who this team can be. We've been pointing at this game really since Big Ten Media Days in Indianapolis because I think we're going to learn a lot about Michigan State and I think we're going to learn a lot about Minnesota and it sets them up very well talking about the Gophers if they win today to really start talking about contending for the West. Yeah, and the offense has performed awfully well through the first three games. However, this offense is now going to have to adjust to life without Chris Ottman Bell, as Ron alluded to. Guys, how does that change things for this offense? And do you worry this could drastically alter things for this Gopher offense? Justin, I'm going to start with you. I really don't because it is going to start with Mo Ibrahim. We know he's going to get the bulk of the carries. We know he's going to get the bulk of the offense. It's a huge loss, no doubt. We talked about that with PJ and with Michael Brown Stevens on the PJ Flex show this week. But it's not a case where we're going to talk about the, the last Michigan State game in a couple of minutes. You know, they had Tyler Johnson back then, and that was about it, right? So if Tyler Johnson gets hurt, you're in trouble at wide receiver position. You've got Daniel Jackson. You've got Michael Brown Stevens. You've got Brevin Spanford. Dalen Wright is a guy who can make a huge impact. So I think they'll be okay in the passing game, but also it is a huge miss to have your best red zone receiver, your best third down receiver, and really your best overall receiver missing. But I think they've got enough other guys in the passing game, and I also think it's going to start and end with Mo as it should. Ron. Yeah, I agree with Justin on that one. When you look at Michigan State's run defense, they've given up almost 100 yards a game. You got the number one rushing offense in the Big Ten, averaging 312 yards right now. So I don't think much is going to change. They, they're, this is a running team. This is going to go back to the, you know, Marion Barber, Lawrence Maroney days where Glenn Mason would just ground and pound it till you figure out a way to stop him. And then he, he, Brian Cupido could step back and throw the ball. And so, or Adam Weber or whoever. And so I think that's what this team is going to be. Tanner Morgan is is not going to have to win games too often. It's going to come down to the legs of Mo. PJ Flex said on the PJ Flex show, he looks better than ever. I think JG or Pierre made a, a comment to the, the baseball movie where the kid broke his arm. It's the same thing. You know, that's that's where Mo is. He got hurt, and now his leg is stronger than ever. Henry Rongardner from Rookie of the Year. Yeah, just to clarify, yes, that is correct. Good memory on the P.J. Flex show, Ron. Outstanding. It's no secret, guys, as you mentioned, the running game has produced massive results. Mo Ibrahim has been sensational through the first three games. But, guys, to piggyback off the Ottman Bell situation, should the Gophers anticipate seeing opponents stack in the box a little bit more, selling out to stop the run? How do you take advantage of that if that's what indeed happens, Ron? Yeah, you, you are going to see that. I mean, it, you'd be a stupid off defensive coordinator to think I'm going to line up and base and stop this run game. They're going to put an extra safety in the box. You've seen this in the past. They're going to go man coverage. And again, that's where Tanner Morgan has to find a guy that can be man. My money is going to be on Dalen Wright. His size, his strength, his physicality, and then also Brevin uh, Span forward. If you run play action, he's now one-on-one -on -one with a, a linebacker trailing him. He's one of the most athletic tight ends, in my opinion, in the Big Ten. I think that they have to be able to do that. But yeah, every team's going to start stacking the box because they're going to be like, look, we know Mo can beat us. Can anybody else beat us? Chris Altman-Bell's hurt. Find us another guy. 
And Justin, even if they do stack the box, or even if it does look like they sell, they're going to be selling out for the run, how much confidence do you think that this team has in their run game now to say, you know what, we still think we can beat you regardless? They do have great confidence in Mo, and I think they have great confidence in Tanner to make the right decisions up there. That's something we haven't really talked about, getting reunited with Kirk Shiraka, bringing back the run-pass option that was so great for them in 2019, the last times that these two guys worked together. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. I mean, everybody knows they are going to try to stack the box today, Michigan State. Their pass defense has not been very good. They want to make sure that uh, they can also stop Mo Ibrahim. But the Gophers, I think, have to take what Michigan State gives them here early on. Historically, in the six years that P.J. Fleck has been around, guys, whenever they've struggled running the ball all of a sudden they'll they'll hit a passing play for like 10 or 15 yards and the next play they'll break off a 10 yard run they are good at throwing to open up the running lane so that's kind of how I expect them to roll with that and the Gophers haven't really been tested in their first three games today in East Lansing we certainly expect that to change Michigan State is coming off a loss at Washington last week but this won't be an easy contest for PJ Fleck and company what does Minnesota need to take away in order to make their lives easier today on the field Justin well, they need to look at the, how Washington attacked. Washington was aggressive. Michael Penix Jr., great quarterback from Indiana a few years ago, reunited with Kalen DeBoer, who's the head coach at Washington, was his offensive coordinator in Bloomington a few years ago. They were aggressive right from the jump. They took a couple of uh, deep shots. That's what I want to see the Gophers do here early, just to let them know that we aren't going to just try to run it 50 or 60 times. Like, yes, Chris Ottman bell is gone, but we have other options. We've heard P.J. Fleck talk about that all year. We have a lot of options is what he says. So I want to see them utilize them. I don't want them to go into a shell. I don't want them to be conservative. I want them to kind of set the tone here early. I'm going to talk about that in my keys to the games. Like, they have to hit first, just like Washington did um, out there in Seattle last weekend. Aggression sounds like it might be a key to the game. Yeah, and, and I bring this up. Michigan State, I keep bringing this up. I talked to Braylon Networks this week. We, we were, I was on his show uh, back in Michigan. He's working for a Michigan radio or a TV show. And so I was over there talking about that. He played in Michigan. He said it. Michigan State, they want to be bullies. Look at what Devin Bush did when he played against Michigan State, you know, trying to screw up the field. Michigan State walks onto their own field, and they want to bully you during warm-ups. And so aggression is going to be key, but <laughs> controlled aggression. Don't get Devin Bushes. Don't go out there and screw up their field because they got in your way during your warm-ups just you know play your game PJ Fleck is, is a mind uh, uh, psychologist he knows exactly what these guys are going to do and he wants to get these guys going they go down to the music and how many decibels the music should play at in order to to, to, to work on health and growth so PJ Fleck is gonna be prepared for this but this is what I'll say when you look at Michigan State's running game you have to stop that first because that's what these young guys are going to rely on Thorne is going to give the ball up if he has if he's forced to throw on third down they have not been great and that's what Washington did. They came out early, punched them in the mouth. Michigan State had to play catch up, and it didn't work. And guys, even though these two teams play in the same conference, it's been five years since the Gophers and Spartans have played each other. Uh, Justin, uh, the last time these two teams met was back in 2017 when Minnesota scored 21 points in the fourth quarter, but came up just a little bit short against the Spartans. What do you remember about that game? Yeah, well, that was Tyler Johnson, what I was talking about. I think he had three touchdown passes there late. That was kind of his emergence. The, the most memorable thing about that game, sadly, guys, is that there was like a 40-minute lightning delay before it started. 2017, for whatever reason, we had lightning delay in Michigan. We had lightning delay uh, against Michigan State. You mentioned it, though, Pierre. Like, I've been to Spartan Stadium a couple of times. This is my third time. It's been like a decade. I remember so little about this place because we just haven't seen it. So when I'm telling you that the weather is the only thing that I remember, about that 2017 game and a couple Tyler Johnson catches. I think that tells you everything you need to know. On the flip side of that, though, you know, Michigan State hasn't seen Minnesota in a while. And I, I have to imagine that Minnesota might look a little different than the last time they played him, right, Ron? Yeah, I mean, but the, I think Tanner Morgan was here back then, too. Yeah, so. could have been. <laughs> so, um, I, I, this is what I'll say. Yeah, he that, was red that's a long time. He was redshirting. Yeah. <laughs> totally different team now. Totally different group of kids. Um, but, but this is what I'll say. Michigan State, when they see Minnesota, they're going to watch the tape from these first three games. And Minnesota, Justin brought it up, didn't really get tested. They did exactly what they're supposed to do. What Michigan State and Minnesota are doing walking to these games, yeah, it's literally like a blind date. They have no idea what they're going to get, but they're going to come out swinging. And whoever can like get the, the upper hand and control this game early, I don't think it's going to have a fourth quarter comeback. I think whichever team can put doubt in the other team's head is going gonna, is gonna to continue on because this is when it gets tighter because Big Ten play has started. And it's a lot more serious, a lot more physical, and a lot better players. Yeah, we can't wait to see it all play out as Minnesota gets set to take on Michigan, Michigan State 11.
7 a.m. kickoff later on today. More to come here on the Gopher pregame show when we come back. This Gopher defense has played lights out this season. We'll discuss if that could continue today on the other side of the break. You're watching the Gopher pregame show. We are less than two hours away from kickoff between Minnesota and Michigan State. Live picture now outside the stadium as Sparty gets set to host. The Gophers should be a great one. We are certainly looking forward to it coming up in just under two hours. Welcome back to the Gopher pregame show, everybody. Saturdays are typically reserved for college football, but Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins has some personal investment in today's contest. Cousins, of course, played his college ball at Michigan State and was asked about his thoughts on today's game. This is what he had to say. Obviously, I ride with the alma mater, but I've always said the Gophers are my Big Ten West team. I don't even know if they still call it the Big Ten West or East with adding USC and UCLA to the future. We'll see what happens. But uh, Minnesota's off to a great start, 3-0. and And they really, I mean, they've blown people out. So uh, I love seeing them succeed. And, um, and uh, what would be great would be, I think, Michigan State's in the East. If the two of them could meet in the Big Ten championship game, that would be, that would be awesome. So uh, hopefully we can make that happen. But certainly Spartans got to pick themselves up after what happened out in Seattle last weekend. You know, obviously he went to Michigan State. I don't know how I feel about this playing both sides of the fence thing, though. I mean, just Kirk, just come out and say it. You want Michigan State to win the game, you win there. I, I don't love the both sides of the fence here, guys. Either of you. That's Kirk Cousins, man. That's Kirk Cousins. 
That's Kirk Cousins. He's not going to take a stand. He's not going to alienate Minnesota. We've just started to like him after the Green Bay game. I've always liked him, by the way. Great career here. 2011 gave one of the best Big Ten Media Day speeches I've ever heard about leadership and everything that goes along with it. It was very good. And uh, he was 2-1 and one against the Gophers, in case anybody cares. Two, uh, well, I mean, that's not bad. 2-1 and one's not bad, Ron. Yeah, I remember covering Kirk Cousins with the Big Ten Network. Him and Nichols were split in time. And at the time, honestly, Kirk Cousins had a better game. I think they're playing... I can't remember who I did the game for. I think it's Colorado, maybe or Purdue. But I remember Kirk Cousins kind of showing that he was better than Nichols. Nichols ended up moving a receiver that year. Uh, and then Kirk Cousins' career, like JG said, took off from there. I think that was like 2009 when I did that game. So, Sounds yeah, so right. he would have taken out yep. 2011, become the man. And, yeah, now he's uh, now he's here. And so, yeah, Kirk Cousins is never going to be controversial. <laughs> like, he's never just going to say, I want Michigan State to win. Even though if he said it, nobody cares. I want to make a bet that if Minnesota beats – uh, Michigan State, Kirk Cousins has to wear okay. Minnesota Gophers gear for the week. Right. Like, that's what needs to happen. I think uh, there's still time for that, too. We're still less than two hours from kickoff, so there's still time for you to call Somebody him. Somebody tweet Kirk yeah. Cousins. Everybody start tweeting Kirk Cousins. Ron Johnson has said, you have to wear, or just wear it to warm-ups tomorrow. Wear, wear Minnesota gear to warm-ups tomorrow, Kirk, and then, you, you know, you'll pay your bet off. We'll or see. how about just, like, maroon and gold plaid? Yeah. Maybe maroon <laughs> and gold plaid because he's kind of a plaid guy, right? So just put the maroon and gold in and, and mix it in that way. We, we don't want him to go too far off brand. <laughs> We're going to be counting on you, the fans, to make that happen now as we get set for kickoff here in just under two hours. Well, guys, it's not a stretch to talk about this Gopher defense as perhaps being one of the best defensive units in the nation. In their last five games, dating back to last year, the Gopher defense has given up four total touchdowns. I know they haven't played high firepower teams this season, but they shut down Wisconsin and West Virginia in their final two games last season, and that's carried over into this season. Why have they been such a tough group to crack, Ron? Uh, well, I mean, they play hard nose now, and what you see with Joe Rossi, he's slowly gotten these guys to a point where they're not thinking. I told the Mario, Mariano story married to his face. When he was thinking as a younger player, he looked extremely slow. Now it looks like he's reacting, he's yep. playing fast, he's gotten help from a lot of guys. And then when you look at the back end, Tyler Newman and Justin Wiley look really, really good. They look confident. They look like they are seasoned veterans back there in the defensive backfield. And that's the other key. You have guys that are older now, Braylon Oliver. You got a lot of guys on this team that are older and mature. And so this is just a product of Joe Rossi taking over and then putting the defense together that we knew he could. Justin. They're playing fast. Ron nailed it. There's really not a lot I can add to that. They know their assignment. They know what they're supposed to do. And as Joe Rossi said this week, even if it's not the perfect call or it's not the perfect scheme, the fact that there's clarity about that allows them to play fast. And that's not just Mariana Sorry Marin. That's everybody. And so the fact that their minds are clear, we bring up Kirk Cousins. You talks about wanting to have a quiet mind. The defense has a very quiet mind right now. And that's why I think they've been good really since Rossi took over. When Rob Smith was the defensive coordinator, I'm on the sidelines, as you know, guys, it was chaos down there. Guys not knowing what they were supposed to do. Guys confused. Guys in the wrong spot. We saw that in 2018. They make the move to Rossi. He simplifies everything. Gets everybody to just kind of start doing their job, specifically Mariano Sorry Marin here the last couple of years. And that's why they have been really good. The simplicity of it has allowed everybody to play fast. Hey, JG, I got a question for you then. What was more chaotic, Rob Smith's defense on the sideline or you at home without your wife trying to get all three <laughs> kids dressed and ready to go somewhere? Well, I'm still a dad, and he's no longer the Gopher defensive coordinator. So I think <laughs> I've, I think I stabilize things. <laughs> I think I stabilize things. But it's a good comparison. It's a good comparison when things get a little pear shaped. One kid hasn't eaten breakfast. One kid's not dressed. One kid's got to brush his teeth. That is a very apt comparison, Ron, because that's what it felt like for sure. Absolutely, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, you guys mentioned Mariano Sorry Marin. A young man that seems to be all over the field during the game. Sorry, Marin leads the team in total tackles with 16. It's eight more than the next closest gopher. He also has two tackles for loss. Guys, how important is he to the gopher defense? Justin, you kind of hit on it a little moment ago. I mean, PJ's called him an extra defensive coordinator on the field. He's so smart. That's the thing about Mariano is that if he wasn't going to the University of Minnesota, he was going to the Ivy League. He was going to go play somewhere in the Ivy League because he was such a good student. He was so smart. And he comes here, and, and he basically is Joe Rossi's, you know, ex the extension of Joe Rossi out there on the field, getting guys lined up, getting them where they're supposed to be. If something changes with a shift or a motion, he knows what it means. He's been terrific and even Joe Rossi will run a bunch of stuff by him on game week in terms of how they want to defend stuff and how they want to make calls and things like that so he's extremely important.
Yeah, we mentioned the Gophers have yet to be tested this season. I don't think anyone is expecting them to win via blowout every week. There are going to be games where this team is going to be tested and very well could come today. How do you want to see them respond to adversity, Ron, when that eventually comes? Well, PJ Fleck talks about it all the time is how you respond. You're going to fail, but you're not a failure. And so how do they respond to when they fail? How do they respond to a big play from Michigan State? How do they respond when they don't have Chris Altman Bell like they used to on the field, being able to make a play to get the guys going? They have to find somebody else. Again, I say Brevin Span Ford. I, I look, I'm looking for Dalen Wright to grow up today. Like today, he's going to be mentally tested. He's got to grow up today. But that's what I want to see. I want to see when Michigan State goes on a 15 play drive and they score, how does Tanner Morgan get these guys on the field and how do they respond? And then that's going to, it might go back and forth all day and be a 30 to 35 game, but I want to see how Tanner Morgan responds without his number one receiver. Who does he look for? All right, Justin, we're going to see you a little bit later on in the show. Uh, you take a couple next plays off, relax, you know, call your kids, make sure everything is okay, and we'll see you a little later in the show. Stick around when we come <laughs> back, everybody. Ron and I are going to take a deeper dive on what has worked so well for Minnesota on offense and where Michigan State might be vulnerable. That's next. Welcome back to the Gopher pregame show. Welcome back everybody to the Gopher pregame show live picture outside of Spartan Stadium right now as Michigan State gets set to host Minnesota a little later on today and right now we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive in what has worked well so far for Minnesota and where Michigan State might be vulnerable. Ron with me here and Ron uh, this is from last week we saw Chris Ottman Bell uh, who unfortunately as we've been saying is no longer going to be a part of the Gophers this season but this is a play right here that worked awfully, awfully well. What did you see? So if I got man-to-man -man coverage here and I'm watching this, this is the matchup. If these two guys, if he can beat uh, Quinn, Tanner Morgan has to get rid of the ball fast. If I know I have man and this safety does not get off the hash quick enough, I'm taking that all day every week. And that's what you're going to see here is Tanner Morgan knows the safety. He uses his eyes. He looks at the running back. He drops to the flat. That safety didn't get off the hash quick enough. 
Chris Altman Bell has a great throw by Tanner Morgan. Great play. Great block by Quinn Carroll. And that was the key. Tanner Morgan was able to sit in the pocket and not be uh, rushed to get the ball out. You see there, look at that yep. pocket. Quinn Carroll drops that anchor. And then the safety. The safety was the key. He stayed on the hash too long because he was threatened on the backside. And that was just a great play by Tanner Morgan. Let's get here, to the next play here. Same thing. Yeah. I got Dalen Wright, this guy. Look at that coverage. His eyes are inside. He's not watching. He's worried about this. They're in some kind of coverage. Dalen Wright's your guy. Same thing. Quinn Carroll drops the anchor. Great pocket. And then he gets it up. He knows man to man. I'm going to take that. Great footwork there. I'm going to take the that zone. nine times out of ten. He give him the little man celebration. But he knows that guy is more athletic than their corner. He's playing too far off. He sets his feet. He's trying to play catch coverage, as they call it, which means he's going to catch him and get it in, and he gets that foot in. That's only good on Saturdays. Sure. If he drags that second foot, it'll be good on Sundays. Let's see where Michigan State might be vulnerable here. You saw this against Washington, and, you know, in this – we can here stop it here, and then we can – So, same thing yeah. here. This safety is going to dictate the play. Tanner Morgan, that's going to be real comfortable with his eyes. These corners' eyes – are inside what they're watching for is any keys if you don't give them any keys same here if these guys don't get depth you'll have a bunch of balls that can go behind them you have a bunch of plays safety drops down into the box and now he knows on play action that safety's in the box he's dead and look right behind him so that's the key if you can get the, some kind of movement some kind of motion to get the safety in the box and then you can run something Penix Jr. they know this kid he, yeah. he, you know they, he's a good quarterback all he does is he rolls right. Safety thinks it's going to go to the left, because, or sorry, going to go to his left because the quarterback's rolling right. He comes back, throws a backside. It's a great play design, and they caught the safety in a bind, and that's what's going to happen with Michigan State today. We'll see if uh, Minnesota can take advantage of those Michigan State miscues. When we come back, though, Ron mentioned him a moment ago, Quinn Carroll, Minnesota's right tackle. We sit down with him one-on-one -on -one and get his thoughts on now moving back to play for the Minnesota Gophers. That's next.
You're watching the Gopher pregame show. Live picture out in East Lansing outside Spartan Stadium as Michigan State and Minnesota get set to go mano in mano here a little bit later on in the afternoon. The Gopher pregame show is back with you here on Fox 9. Time now to break down plays from last week that worked well for the Gophers. We did that a moment ago, but now we are going to be sitting down one on one with Quinn Carroll, right tackle for the Minnesota Gophers to get his thoughts on what it was like transferring from Notre Dame, but now coming back home to playing for Minnesota. Yeah. It's been an enjoyable start to the season, not only for yourselves, but for Gopher fans. You make it through the non-conference portion of the schedule unscathed at 3-0. What have you noticed about your team in the way they've progressed each and every week? Yeah, I mean, each and every week we're, we're becoming more and more of a team. Um, you know, we can only practice so much, and then through those games we gain so much experience together, and we learn so much, and we become so much better. So, um, yeah, we've just gotten better and better each week, and I'm really excited for these conference matchups. Before the season started, a lot of us in the media were talk looking at this team and talking about, okay, well, this team has a lot of returners, a lot of guys back on offense, a lot of guys back on defense. The one group that had a little bit of turnover, though, was that offensive line. You're one of the new faces here. How have you guys gelled and, and come together in your, in your you know, thought process in terms of how the pieces have fit on the offensive line? Yeah, well, uh, this spring was big for them. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to compete. I was um, getting my degree, but um, as we went That's through okay, fall camp. That's okay, by the way. You're allowed to go get a degree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but as we went through fall camp, we really uh, got a lot of reps together. Um, and those last couple weeks, um, the starting offensive line kind of was, it wasn't named, but it was kind of out there getting most reps. And um, that was when we were really able to gel together um, going against our defense, which is one of the best in the country, and really preparing us for Saturdays. Now you're a grad transfer coming over from Notre Dame. You're from Edina, though. What led you to come back to, to Minnesota and play at the University of Minnesota? Well, it was a great opportunity for me to come home. You know, um, I was getting my degree. Uh, great opportunity to come back and compete for the home state, and um, more playing time, uh, closer to family, and and yeah, it was just a great opportunity and perfect timing. What was your experience like at Notre Dame and how did it help maybe mold you for an opportunity like this? I loved it. I loved every second there. Made some great friendships, great relationships with the coaches and, and teammates. And, uh, you know, in practice each day and, and any time that I got in the game, it really made me better and uh, really prepared me for this opportunity here. When you have a guy like Mo Ibrahim who's coming off the, the injury and he's having a, a heck of a start to the season so far, how much pride does a line take in, you know, knowing that you're just making holes for guys in the backfield and just giving them the opportunity to run. Yeah, well, he makes us look good. Uh, <laughs> our job is a lot easier with him in the backfield, and, um, you know, we're just trying to sustain our blocks for as long as possible so that he can be in the light and, uh, and really make this team shine. You go on the road for the first time this year. You're playing a team in Michigan State that had a lot of success last year. Yeah, they're coming off a loss against Washington for last weekend, but this is still a tough place to play. What has the mood been like this week leading up to Michigan State? We're excited. Um, you know, we come off three big wins, and, and uh, we know that we're one of the best teams in the Big Ten, if not the best. So we're ready to go compete, and uh, this week of practice is going to be crucial to, to prepare for a team like Michigan State. When you study them on tape, what jumps out to you? Uh, they've got a lot of skill uh, on both sides of the ball. They're they're fast, um, but we're really good too. So we're uh, we're preparing each and every day. We're watching film. We're practicing hard, and um, we're going to make the most of this opportunity. Like I said, this is your first road game of the season. Are you excited to see how this team responds to you know fans jeering at you? You know, you guys are the enemy in town. What what are you hoping to see from your team in in response to that kind of adversity? Yeah, I was telling Coach, I, I love away games. I love going to a new atmosphere and, and seeing how, how the team responds, how, uh, you know, how we're able to play at a different venue. Um, and I know Michigan State has a, great, has a great stadium and great fan section. So I'm excited for our team to, to really take this on as a challenge and, and really give it to them. PJ talks a lot about changing your best every week. Um, what do you change from week in to week out leading up to a game like this? Um, really, it's all in your preparation, uh, knowing who you're going against, knowing the mistakes you made the week before, weeks before. Um, you know, games are really where you make the most improvement. So uh, studying yourself first and then going on to your opponent and seeing 
what you have to change in order to better yourself for your opponent. If any one or two things need to happen in order for you guys to win this game, in your opinion, what needs to happen? Uh, we need to protect the quarterback. Um, I think our, our front five right now, we're going to be able to do that. And uh, our preparation has been great so far. We just need to keep it up. And um, we really need to protect the quarterback and continue to run the ball as we've been doing. I know there's still a lot of football left to be played after you know your game with Michigan State, but what would a win at Michigan State do for this team to kind of galvanize you for the rest of the way? I think it would, it would uh, help prove ourselves uh, to the rest of the nation because everybody's saying that we haven't played anybody. And um, Michigan State's a really good team, really tough team. And, and I believe the past three teams we've played have been really good teams as well. Um, but when we go out there and, and do our thing, it's going to be uh, eye-opening to the rest of the nation what kind of a team we are. And I certainly know that a lot of Gopher fans are hoping to feel the same way by the end of this game. Our thanks to Quinn Careful sitting down with us. I need to point out that uh, our sports photographer, Jared, who edited that piece, said to me at the end, he said, you know, you really look about this small sitting next to Quinn Carroll. I was like, well, the guy's 6'6", 310. You know, what do you want me to do? He is a massive anchor on the right side, and he really has played well for them so far. Yeah, he has played well, and, and he's a telltale sign, or he's a fairy tale or tale sign. I don't even know the word, but he's a, he's a cautionary tale. That's what it is. Um, of kids that leave the state and go to bigger schools thinking that that's the answer because I'm one of the best in the state, so I got to go to the best school that picked me up or offered me. That's not always the best way. He didn't play as a freshman. He didn't play as a sophomore. As he said, he got in three games. Games, and now he's gotten an opportunity. God blessed him with an opportunity to come back. P.J. Fleck welcomed him with open arms, mm -hmm. and he's now the starting right tackle. So I just wonder, like, did he learn a lot from Notre Dame, or could he have, you know, helped out along Daniel Falele the last couple of years and then now been a starter just like he is and probably played a little bit, you know, the last couple of years as well. But, you know, he is getting that opportunity. So kids at home watching and parents, when this, your kid's getting recruited, hey, it's not always about the biggest school offering you. It's about the school that's going to allow you to play and fit your scheme. If I went to Michigan State, who knows what would have happened, but I came to Minnesota, thank God, and had one of the greatest careers in Gopher history, but Michigan State, I'd have been just another guy next to Plaxico Burris, trying not to go to jail. So, <laughs> you know, it just, it just always depends on where you decide to go. We mentioned that <laughs> offensive line. That's been a starting point. That was kind of a key area as we went into the season, but how do you think it's gelled together now? So far, so good through the first three games. Oh, they look really good. I mean, Quinn Carroll, you look at uh, Michael Schmidt or uh, uh, John Michael Schmidt. When you look at that offensive line, they're really good. And, and the other key is that Tanner Morgan, we saw those plays we just did. He's getting the ball out of his hands really fast. He's yeah, really, he really decisive. Is. Yeah. Uh, that throw to Dalen Wright, most quarterbacks maybe wouldn't have thrown that because the DB was off, but he put it to his outside shoulder up high enough where he said, my big receiver, I'm going to go make a play. And that's what you look forward to as a lineman, too, where you're not not having to sit back there like Kyler Murray running like he just stole his parents, like a toddler that took their parents' <laughs> phone running around the house because you can't block for 30 seconds. And so that's where Tanner Morgan is really good, too. He gets the ball out of his hands really fast, and he doesn't allow the offensive line to have to block for too long. Yeah, certainly have played well so far. We'll see if that continues today against Michigan State. When we return on the Gopher pregame show, we'll take a look around the Big Ten at some of the big matchups ahead this weekend. That's coming up next.
Welcome back to the Gopher pregame show. No sun yet out in East Lansing. We hope the clouds clear up and it's a nice sunny day. You know what? Just as long as the rain stays away. I think think everybody would be all right with it. So far, so good out there in East Lansing as we get you set for Michigan State and Minnesota. Welcome back to the Gopher pregame show, everybody. Time now to take a look around the Big Ten this weekend. Plenty of big matchups on the docket. Ron, let's start at the Big House. Battle of the Undefeateds as 3-0 Maryland travels to take on 3-0 Michigan. I know Michigan has destroyed everyone they faced so far this season, but Maryland quarterback Talia Tagovailoa has had a terrific start to the season. 77% completion percentage, six touchdowns through the air, one on the ground. Ron, how much of a fight do you expect Maryland to put up here? I expect them to put up a little bit of a fight, but Michigan is really good. John Harbaugh, see, or uh, Harbaugh seems like, Jim Harbaugh seems like, he's found his quarterback. Like, he's found a guy finally. Ronnie Bell's playing really well. His run game is really good. Their offensive line is good. The defense is playing with confidence. They look like a team that's ready to get back to the Big Ten Championship and try to stay in that Final Four again. Uh, so I, I think a little bit of a fight, but I, I think Michigan's going to make sure they do take care of business because they don't want to falter at any point. They don't want to give up anything until they play Ohio State. Hard to pick against Michigan with the way they've been playing so far, that's for sure. Let's yeah. move over to another Big Ten matchup taking place today. Wisconsin, your favorites. Traveling to take on undefeated Ohio State. The Badgers bounced back last week after suffering a surprising loss to Washington State a couple of weeks ago. Ohio State is, of course, Ohio State. C.J. Stroud looking every bit like the Heisman contender we expected him to be. How much of a chance are we giving Wisconsin here, Ron? Uh, a little bit, but I'm excited to watch them lose to Ohio State. Like, it, they lost the week before. I mean, this is like Christmas twice. Like, I don't think this has ever <laughs> happened. December 25th has come twice this year for me. They lost, and then they have to go play Ohio State. So I'm so excited to watch Ohio State just do that to them all game. Marvin Harrison Jr., which I feel old. I coached his dad with the yep. coach, and now his son is in the NFL. And so I'm excited to see what this 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 these receivers on the edges. I mean, they are just really good. And, and I know Jim Leonard's going to get these guys going, but I just feel like these receivers for Ohio State are just too good. 2-1 and one, Iowa on the road taking on 3-0 and oh, Rutgers. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and try to build this game up. I mean, no. let's be honest. If you watched Iowa this season, you know you're in for a grind. Las Vegas has the total on this game at 34. Just 34 points. Do you like the over? Do you like the under? Who wins this game? I like the under on that, 34 points. Wow. I, I don't think Brian Ferentz, he, he reminds me of I am Groot from the Avengers. Like, every time <laughs> he calls a play, it's just I am Groot. And then they go out there and run a play, and they come back. What you got next, coach? I am Groot. Like, he just does not have an innovative plays. The only reason I feel like he's not fired is because his dad's the head coach, and his mom would divorce his dad. Or probably not divorce him, but probably not speak to him for a couple days. So he doesn't want to fire his son just yet. I think he's going to try to find a way to get his son another job somewhere. Um, uh, but I just don't feel like Iowa's the place for him. Well, I certainly don't want to see a family break up over it, you know. I mean, no, they're not going to get divorced. Like, it's it's you know, part of the business, <laughs> you know. <laughs> He'll it's resign a, before he fires It's a tough profession. It what is. can we say? It's a tough profession. Indiana, meanwhile, is off to a 3-0 start. However, they're a 16-and-a-half point dog on the road today at 2-1 and one Cincinnati. The Hoosiers have three wins by an average of less than seven points. You can look at that one of two ways. You can say, well, they're barely beating people or – they're winning close games. Cincinnati's one loss came in the first game of the year on the road at Arkansas. They've been very good so far this season. Can Indiana hang with the Bearcats? Uh, yes, I think they can. Indiana is one of those teams like Purdue. It depends on which team shows up. They can be really good. They're explosive. They have some playmakers. But it comes down. I was at Indiana last year when they played the Gophers. Indiana was doing a decent job of keeping the Gophers contained early, and then the Gophers figured them out. So this Indiana team, if they can you know, get going early and put doubt out there for Cincinnati, I think they could pull it off. But Cincinnati is a good team. That's another team looking to get into that Final Four. So I really think that they're going to try to you know, make a statement in the Big Ten and say, hey, look, we are better than a lot of people give us credit for so far. It's time for us to jump us back up in these standings. I'm with you. I thought 16 and a half was a little bit much in terms of a spread like that. And if you're into a thing like that, uh, I don't know. I'm not saying. Uh, anyway, finally, Pitt, uh, Penn State back at home hosting Central Michigan. Penn State is a 28 point favorite. Nicholas Singleton, Penn State starting running back. What a start of the year for him. Over 300 yards on the ground so far. But what most impresses me, Ron, 11 yards a carry. 
Yeah, that, had, that's a big number. Yeah, so Spice Adams was here with me last weekend for the uh, Hall of Fame induction. So I had to listen to this Penn State Ar uh, Auburn game all day because he had it on his phone when we were in the car, we were driving to my daughter's softball game, when we were at the Gophers game, he was keeping an eye on Penn State. So I heard all about it. This is a good team. They are doing a good job. Uh, the Auburn game probably could have been a lot worse than it was because there were some mistakes here and there. But Penn State's a good team, so I look forward to them. They're going to blow past uh, Central Michigan, no problem. I think uh, I think. I think that's going to be the same same for me. 28 point favor might not be enough to be honest with you. If Penn State taking on Central Michigan. We're not done here on the Gopher pregame show. When we come back, we'll give you our keys to victory as we get you ready for Minnesota and Michigan State. That's next. You're watching the Gopher pregame show. Winding things down here on the Gopher pregame show. Time now to get to our keys to victory. And you know what? Since Justin is back with us, we're going to start with Justin first. Welcome back, buddy. We're going to start with you, Justin. Keys to victory, it's sir. It's good to be back. It's it's good to be back. Mine is weather, the storm, and not the rain that might be coming here in the next 20 minutes. About a 30% chance of rain for the next few hours. Otherwise, it's going to be like this. Gray dark kind of an East Lansing day, but weather the storm Michigan State was kind of embarrassed last week. They did not play well against Washington and they've been challenged this week by their coaches. They've been pushed this week by their coaches. There's going to be some personnel changes. It sounds like for them defensively, so they're going to be ready to play today, much like Washington was to welcome them to Seattle a week ago. So hopefully the Gophers with all these six year seniors with all these experienced guys can weather that early storm, get into the game and not let it get out of hand in the first quarter or two. You know, you failed to mention to me that you dabble in a little bit of meteorology we could have had a weather segment with you each and every week and uh, now you're Hang telling on. me Sleeves I mean, up. you're just telling me this Sleeves now up. you're telling me this now yeah sky aware <laughs> stay sky aware here in east lansing everybody it's going to be a sleeves up kind of afternoon <laughs> ron your keys to victory well mine is third down do you look at third down offense third down defense the gophers are number one in the big 10 in both 
They have to be very efficient on third down today. That's one. Offense convert because you're keeping their offense off the field, and then defense get off the field so that your offense can get back out there. It's really simple. It's really cliche, but that's going to be a huge key. Michigan State, when they did not convert third downs against Washington, they fell behind slowly. That's going to be the key. On third down, get off the field. All right, my key to victory today is take advantage of the Michigan State miscues. The Spartans are 2-1, and one, but... They have turned the ball over in each of their first three games. Ron kind of alluded to this earlier in the show. They did it twice against Western Michigan, twice against Akron, and once against Washington. If they're going to cough up the ball, you have got to make them pay. That is a huge swing of momentum. Even if you don't score, you get a chance to perhaps flip the field, pin Michigan State deep into their own territory. That is certainly going to be key for Minnesota. Take advantage of those miscues that Michigan State has seemed to be prone to through their first three games. All right, before we get to Ron's matchup meter, I want to tell you to download the Fox Bet Super 6 app for your chance at winning $25,000. Fox Bet Super 6 is a free-to-play contest where you pick the winners and margins of victory of six marquee matchups. If you get all six right in the college football contest, you have a shot at winning the $25,000 jackpot. Open the app, make your picks before Saturday's games, and you could be walking away with some money. All right, Pick matchup it. meter time. I mean, we'd like to win some money, right? If you're Ohio doing it right now. Ron's doing it right beat. now. So make sure you, you get your picks in. Yeah, okay. Can I pick Ohio State to beat Wisconsin six times? I, 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 that, would be, that would be an ideal way for you to make 25 grand. I think a lot of people would love to do it that way, but I don't think they allow it. But anyway, we'll get back to it. You and I can talk about that off, <laughs> off the air. Uh, time to get to the matchup meter. Ron, uh, let's get right to it. Michigan State and Minnesota. What do you like here? Your matchup meter. Yeah, Minnesota right now does have a better offense than Michigan State, but I'm going to go with Michigan State for the simple fact of Chris Altman bails out and Minnesota has not played as tough of a schedule as Michigan State has. Uh, Minnesota hasn't as Michigan State has, so I got to go with Michigan State. Minnesota's defense, though, like I just said, number one in third down defense. One of the tops, you know, run stopping defenses in the Big Ten right now, which is helped because their offense is really good on the ground. Uh, so I'm going to go there. As far as coaching, I like Mel Tucker just for the simple fact of how he's turned Michigan State around at one point Michigan State was like it's not going to happen Mel Tucker goes there does turn it around makes it a great program then I got to go with X Factor though I'm going to go with real simple Mo Ibram if he is efficient on the ground he doesn't have to have 200 yards today but he has to be efficient on the ground he has to ground a pound run that clock out put points on the board be extremely strong violent in the red zone and I'm going to give my X Factor to Minnesota there on the road to beat Sparty so you're taking them to win I'm taking Minnesota to win. You're taking Minnesota to win. Justin, uh, P.J. Fleck has admitted to us that he has watched the Gopher pregame show. He's an avid watcher. Uh, clearly, he can't watch it today <laughs> since they're on the road. What do you think he's going to do when he finds out that Ron took Mel Tucker as the matchup meter uh, over him? I'd be surprised if word hasn't already gotten to him because, as you know, P.J. Fleck has a lot of people working on his behalf. And let's just say it's good that Ron went into the Gopher Hall of Fame last week because if he made this, la if he would have said this last week, P.J. probably could have gotten him out of that Hall of Fame. So congrats again, Ron, and good timing for you. Good timing for you. Good timing indeed. Uh, speaking of timing, we, we still have a little bit of time to talk about this. But, Justin, uh, Ron mentioned it a moment ago. He likes Minnesota to win today. If you had to take a guess at, or a prediction rather into in how this game will play out, how do you see this game playing out by the end of the day? Well, I think we know what Minnesota wants to do. They want to run the ball with Mo. They want to. They probably want to keep the ball for 35, 40 minutes if they can. I think you hit on a great key to the game, Pierre, is what do you do with the turnovers? Because Peyton Thorne is a guy who's competitive. He likes to run the ball, but he also likes to give the ball to the other team. And he's done that a couple of times so far this season. So I think that's going to be key. That's key every week for the Gophers, though. That's how they roll. But this is a huge game for both programs. You look at the crossover games that uh, Minnesota has in the uh, East the rest of the way with Penn State and Rutgers. This this is one of those swing crossover games that you hear all the time. Wisconsin has Ohio State. Um, Iowa has Michigan and Ohio State. The Gophers don't have those same traps. So when we looked at the season, uh, looked at the schedule before the season, we identified this game late September as a huge one, really for both programs, but certainly for Minnesota to give themselves a leg up on the rest of the West Division moving forward. So big game today, big game. Yeah, big game indeed. And Quinn Carroll, when we talked to him earlier in the show, one on one, he said, you know, we asked him, what's going to be the key to the game? He says, protect the quarterback. That is item number one. You know, and Tanner Morgan, again, the reuni reuniting with Kirk Sharaka has 
worked out very well so far for them. Yeah, again, I, I keep beating a dead horse, but if you remember last year, coming out the huddle, uh, he was coming, I was say Kirk Cousins, Tanner Morgan was coming out the huddle sometimes with 15 seconds left on the play clock, and then you still have to do the check with me when he looks at the coach on the sideline, make sure the play is right or we're going to change it. If you're changing that and you have seven seconds, you saw Tanner Morgan running around with it like a chicken with his head cut off or J.G. trying to get Jilly to put her shoes on. And so that was the key. Now <laughs> he looks comfortable. He looks calm. He's coming to the line with about 20 seconds. He can check with me at about 17 seconds. He has about 12 seconds to change the play, and he can get comfortable, get back in there, boom, clap, give me the ball, let's go. It's a totally different mindset now with Kirk Sharaka because I think Kirk Sharaka has a game plan, and he knows what he wants to do. Mike Sanford Jr. felt like was at odds sometimes of what the actual play should be called. Guys, we appreciate it as much. Justin, enjoy the game. And guys, we will see you again next week on the Gopher pregame show. Enjoy Minnesota and Michigan State, everybody. We'll see you next time right here on Fox 9.